Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are returning to Distro Wars with two new lightweight, not new, wow, bad, 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 two lightweight Linux distributions, uh, MX Linux and Linux Lite, two distributions that both use XFCE, both want to target newer users, both want to have a more simplified Linux experience. And these guys here are, uh, in my opinion, are both good distributions. And one of them, MX Linux, is based on Debian, and Linux Lite is based on Ubuntu. Now, because Linux Lite is based on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu tends to work a little bit better with multimedia because they're less concerned about proprietary stuff in there, then overall you're probably going to have a slightly better experience out of Linux Lite than you will out of MX Linux. But that's kind of a thing. And some people really want the more proprietary approach. So if you're definitely a more proprietary and you're willing to work more with uh, making sure the system's exactly what you want, then MX Linux might be a better bet for you between these two distributions here. All right. And so let's go ahead and have a look first at the websites for these. So MX Linux. So uh, you can uh, read about uh, why they created MX Linux. And um, I believe it's Run with the Dolphin, I believe, is uh, the MX Linux distribution. So you can download it on over here. They have a variety of download links. Um, they have various mirrors. They have torrent files. So I downloaded this today. This is MX 19.1. They do have a 32-bit. This is another major advantage MX Linux is going to have, that Linux Lite is not going to have the 32 bits because it's based on Ubuntu's that do not have 32 bits. Uh, at least it will if it's if it still does have 32, it says are going away very soon. Um, MX Linux will probably not because Debian is maintaining 32-bit for the foreseeable future. Uh, they do have the 32, the 64, and they have an advanced hardware stack as well for very recent hardware stuff. So you have options to get grab those. We have mirrors, we have torrent files. They do have some manuals and things, and Run with the Dolphin is a very, very active in the Linux community, so you can hear from him and um, and get some some information back and forth. Linux Lite, uh, this guy here is also a free, easy use operating system. Now there was the the wonderful somebody did like a Linux, was it a Windows? 12 or something. It was something silly the other day, which was literally a modified Linux Lite. That was not an official <laughs> distribution from Linux Lite. Uh, over here, you can see what your requirements are. You can actually purchase media if you can't download one. We do have a variety of mirrors. We have the mirrors. We have the torrent links. So they're going to be very equivalent in how, uh, you know, how they're going to deliver their software for us. So all that making uh, making the best point of all of those is that um, we actually have with us a lot of good options either way. So let's go ahead and uh, boot one of these guys up and we'll go ahead and uh, see what we're going to see. So we're going to start in with MX Linux, so transitioning over into the desktop. Now, uh, XFCE on my version of virtual machine does not generally boot in full screen, so if it does not boot full screen, that is not a negative on the distribution. That is my individual particular uh, virtual machine build. Why don't I update it? Because I just, you know, it's working for me. I, I don't want to have to fight with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enter my super secret password. Somebody yelled at me the other day, you have to say super secret password every single time. Yeah, because it's a joke. Okay, my super secret password is definitely not one, two, three. I'm going to enter it right here, and uh, I'm going to say it as many times as I feel like saying it inside of the stream because it's a joke. Yeah, somebody actually sent me hate mail over that. Isn't that exciting? All right, the, the fun joys of being on a YouTuber, right? Sometimes aggressive emails because I talk about my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. All right. So, um, FAQ, we have a user's manual. We have a wiki. We have some tools. We have our tweaks. So, uh, now one of the things that Debian does not generally do is it does not generally install multimedia codecs. Linux Lite on the installation, which we are not going to show the installation, but on that installation, you have the option to 
click the check mark to install multimedia codecs that will allow multimedia to play out of the box. Debian distributions do not do that, so most of the good ones, including MX Linux, have the easy ability to install codecs. So here on MX, it's right here in the, uh, the welcome screen, so click on your codecs, enter my super secret password that's definitely not 123, and uh, this one here, it tells you the application allows you to install restricted codecs that per, uh, permit advanced audio or video functions. So you have to be careful about, you know, is this allowed in your jurisdiction, whatever else. But for most, the most part, particularly home computer use, you're not going to have a problem with that. So now we're all set up. Now, MX Linux has a lot of really excellent tools inside of it. They're not always the most glorious, the most UI friendly, but it has them and it has a lot more of them than most distributions do have. Things like creating a snapshot of your image and things like that. We'll go ahead and dig through those. Now we do have a popular apps application here. This is going to give you just a very nice, easy, um, application installer just for the most common applications that you might be looking for. So depending if you want browsers, we do have Brave, we have Chromium, we have Falcon, Firefox is already installed, we have Firefox ESR, we have Google Chrome, Opera Pale Moon, so Waterfox, so a lot of options. In fact, I think that this has more of the better browsers available than many distributions have out of the box. You can install a variety of different file managers, other tools, and things like that. So this is giving us a lot of the, the different, uh, different applications that, that you might want to install. Here are uh, the listings of stable repos. It's grabbing information. So this is going to be kind of like a, uh, a synaptic um, package manager here as well, built into it. And then these are other tools that we have as far as uh, this is from Debian backports. We have MX test repo. We have flat packs. So uh, the flat packs, if you're looking for something else that's uh, maybe a more proprietary, something that's not really packaged for uh, for Linux, in most cases, it may appear in the flat pack list. Uh, can't tell if there's nothing here. Maybe we actually don't have anything set up. All right. oh, okay, never mind. Let's. Uh, I'm sure you want to exit. No, I don't want to exit. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. I was like, is it? What's it doing? All right. So here we can actually install a whole variety of different uh, applications as flat packs. So very nice uh, package installer tool. Very nice and simple. We do have the option for tweaks over here. Every time you go to make the tweaks with the tweak tool, it's going to save a current copy that you have in restore. So you can actually re return that back to normal, which is totally awesome. So uh, here we have the ability to uh, control where the panels are. You, you have noticed probably that the panel is a little bit uh, not as traditional. They put it on the, um, on the left of the screen like Ubuntu does. The theory is it gives you more screen space. I'm not a huge fan of it, but uh, hey, that's a matter of personal preference and you can very easily, you know, move it as well. All right, so if you do this, display it there, hit apply, boom, like I said, not a big deal. All right, we'll go ahead and return it back to how it was. Uh, we do have uh, restore the default panel. We can back up or restore any panel configurations that we have. There are themes over here. So you can choose a variety of different theme sets. You can enable various compositors. So if you do want wobbly windows and other things, actually, I don't think that's, let's see, which one's that one? Uh, that's Compiz. So I'm not sure if Compiz goes on XFCE. It's just, I, I installed wobbly windows once. It's like, that was really cool. And it became really annoying. <laughs> I stopped enabling it. Uh, we can reset light DM. So uh, if you actually broke your, uh, your login screen, you can reset that. Literally, you can just come in here and just reset everything. If you mess up, that is a major strength on MX Linux. Most Linux distributions do not have that option. Inside of your tools, you have a live USB maker. You can create a system snapshot. This will allow you to create a distribution that you want. So if you're in a, in a small enterprise environment, maybe you have like 15 workstations or something, you can come in here, create one workstation, create a snapshot, and then deploy that exact build across all of your systems easily. Uh, we have a variety of maintenance things, fixing boot options, repairing boot menus, 
things like that. You can do uh, file cleanups. You can edit the menu. We have a variety of different other options and settings. So definitely more tools inside of MX Tools than most other distributions give us. So out of the box, MX Linux itself has a lot of a lot of good tools. Applications uh, by default, just kind of the basic things that we will find inside of um, XFCE and Debian. So a lot of you know, XF burn for XFCE uh, burning applications. <clears throat> All right. So nothing too out of the ordinary. We do have uh, Clementine as a music player. Some people will like that. We also have VLC. All right. We do have an ebook reader, uh, which is FB reader. Not too bad of a of an ebook reader there. Here's our various settings. Of course, you can access all of your settings up here. Now, inside of your settings panel, you do have all of those tools that we saw. I believe are in this settings panel as well. Maybe they're not. Yeah, they may not be. Uh, we do have an advertisement blocker. Pardon me, I don't use MX Linux a lot. Um, but we do have a variety of different tools. MX Tweak. Oh, there's our MX Tools. I knew it was there somewhere. So click on MX Tools and you have that. So there you go, out of the box. Very nice, uh, very consistent. It's going to have all, all the different tools that we that we need. All of the systems that you have based on Debian. So if you are a person that does not want to be using an Ubuntu-based distribution, hey, you can go ahead and use this one. It's based on Debian. Overall, this works really well. A lot of people love it. Excellent reputation. I would highly recommend MX Linux. So let's go ahead and have a look at Linux Lite next. Okay, and here we are on Linux Lite. This one actually does boot full screen for me. I have no idea why. Um, maybe they have you know, VirtualBox drivers or something already set up. But whatever reason, I think Linux Lite is the only XFCE distribution that actually boots full screen on this computer anymore. <laughs> so there we are. Anyway, when you first uh, get in here, we do have a welcome screen just like MX Linux had. We have a lot of uh, help over here. There's hardware databases things like that. We do have the option here to click this button to install updates. We can install drivers. This is something that uh, that your um, uh, MX Linux does not have as a driver utility. Mm, can I go back to that? I guess I click the home button to go back. We can set a restore point so we can go back and uh, restore the system to a previous version and we have language support. We do not have the nice, uh, the nice little custom software installer on the welcome screen, but you do actually have the option for installing software. So package manager, I think this is probably going to be uh, synaptic. Yep, so this is a synaptic package manager. So we have that as an option. Um, there should be another one as well, light software. I think this is very equivalent to the MX tool. So let's go ahead and load this guy up as well. So here we have the option to install or remove software. So having a look at this guy here. So once again, it's not quite as organized as, as nicely, and there's not as many packages over here, but this does do a decent job of grabbing the most common software packages someone might be looking for, including if you're just switching over to Linux, we got like, you know, uh, the Chrome web browser, if you're not fully away from that yet, you know. Uh, okay, so here we have the option to install updates or not. Just give us a pop-up in the middle of the screen. Not right now. Game Packs, FileZilla, Dropbox, iDevice Manager, Kodi. There's a lot of nice tools over there. Whoops, wrong button. I pushed the wrong button. All right, we'll go ahead and quit that one. Uh, there's Configuring Sources. Try to see if there was another software um, um, installation here as well. There may not be. I don't remember for sure. All right, so uh, other options that we have inside of your tools, we will have a few other packages in here that are gonna help like we had in MX Linux, but we don't have nearly as many as we had over there. Let me see if I can figure out where is my, it's one thing that we don't have quite as easily here is 
unless I'm completely missing it, is all the systems. We have a control panel button over here. Let's go ahead and pull that up. All right, I was looking for that in the menus and I could not actually find it over there. Uh, we have settings editor, we have a MIME type editor, there's our Linux welcome screen, here's our light software, light sound, light sources, all these guys that say light, these are the guys here that are like MX Linux has this the tools built directly into it. Also like MX Linux, they are not the best for uh, the the user interface. They don't look the most classy, but these are things that most Linux distributions do not have, which are very helpful. You mess up your system. Hey, uh, setting your uh, default web browsers, host names, fixing the boot up, freeing up memory. You know, there's a lot of different items in here. You know, here's enable or disable the number lock at login. These are some very nice things, TLP. Um, so this guy here is an excellent uh, power manager system built in here. We can do um, we can do the whisker menu over there. A lot of different tools that we have built inside of here. So this kind of takes care of most of the most of the light tools. Let's see if this has a USB writer or not. There's no USB writer that I know of inside of this. There's no snapshot creator that I know of inside of this as well. And so MX Linux is definitely going to be better for that deployment system that I had mentioned earlier. All right. So everything else is pretty much XFCE. I have whole videos about how to manage XFCE, so we're not going to get into all of that. Let's have a look at what options we have, though. So it does appear, though, we have fewer tools over here. So more streamlined, less bloat. Archive manager, uh, backups, calculator fonts, text readers, graphics, um, much the same. Um, very similar actual uh, actual um, applications, although Linux Lite does have a lot fewer of them. This one, it looks like, does not have the full LibreOffice pack, whereas the, uh, whereas the um, uh, MX Linux did have the full suite, including databasing, uh, drawing, things like that. And here's basic system tools. So they're both going to be very good. They're both going to be very light. They both have the GUI tools for updates. So here is the update installation. We didn't actually cover that on MX Linux, my apologies, but it was over there as well. So you can see that there's updates available. You have that nice status option. Um, all the different items here are very good. So both of these are excellent for lightweight systems, uh, old, good for older systems, things with lower system resources. Uh, the basic summary, both of them are going to be very good. The Linux Lite is going to be more, a little bit more user-friendly out of the box. It's going to work a little bit better out of the box just because Ubuntu does a good job of doing a little bit better support on you know, on different hardware, on more hardware. MX Linux is going to have a lot better support if you're looking for a, a true FOSS experience. And if you think that Ubuntu is the devil and want to stay away from it, MX Linux is probably going to be your better bet. So with all those, you're not going to go wrong with either one of these. These are both for lightweight systems. Of course, MX still has the 32-bit options. Linux Lite only has the 64 at this point in time. So use those in your deciding factors. Let me know your thoughts about these two distributions in the comments down below.